Um, in the last class, we were describing a technique um, of proving a threshold function for a given property. So, this technique was based on the second moment method. So, here we have an example, we will look at it. So, here we have uh, this property P H, where H is a given graph, it is a fixed graph. Uh, the property P H is the property of containing a copy of H as a subgraph. That means, you have um, from the n vertices. So, you have this G and P model and you take a random graph based on that probability space. And then uh, the question is, uh, do we have in the random graph, do we have a uh, copy of H as a subgraph? So, for this given H is a fixed subgraph outside. So, the, 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 the question is what is the probability? So, is there a threshold function for this property? So, uh, our second moment method uh, usually considers a random variable namely here what is the cor correct random variable uh, namely the number of isomorphic copies of H. It is very clear that if H is there this number has to be greater than or equal to 1. If H is not there in G then it has to be 0 it cannot be negative value right 0, 1, 2, 3 like that. These are the only values this random variable can take. As we discussed yesterday in the uh, in the last class, um, it is very clear that proving uh, that when uh, the probability p of n in the g and p that p function p, p of n is less than the threshold that less than the threshold means when p by t tends to 0 as uh, as n tends to infinity, right. If the function p is such that p by t, t is the threshold function, uh, p of n by t of n tends to 0 as n tends to infinity, that means the probability function is below the threshold. In that case, we want to show that this property uh, almost surely will not be there, that means uh, there won't be uh, any uh, isomorphic copies of h in g. Or in other words, if you are counting, the random variable will be equal to 0 for this particular uh, whichever with, with most of the cases, almost cases. So, we want to show that x, the random variable x equal to 0 with uh, almost surely with the probability tending to 1 as n tends to infinity uh, or in other words, the probability of x greater than equal to 1. Uh, will tend to 0 as n tends to infinity. This is what we want to prove on one side. The other side we will want to prove if p by t tends to infinity sorry tends to 1 uh, sorry p by t tends to infinity as n tends to infinity then uh, the then the probability Yeah, then the probability uh, of having property p h that means, at least one copy of h in the uh, random graph should be uh, also tending to 1. So, that means, the probability of x greater than equal to 1 should be uh, equal to uh, ten, uh, equal tending to 1 as n tends to infinity. This is these are the two things we want to show. So, the first uh, thing to prove that when the, uh, the, the probability p of n is below the threshold that probability that x greater than equal to 1 will tend to 0 is easy to show uh, in this way. Uh, what we will do is we will consider the expectation of x and uh, definitely uh, if x is great uh, the probability of x greater than uh, equal to 1 will be less than expectation of x by 1 by Markov inequality. So, therefore, if expectation itself is shown to be less than 1 it tending to 0 then of course, it means that uh, uh, it will uh, it will 
the, the, the with with uh, probability tending to 1 x will be equal to 0. This is the first uh, thing, the other thing we will have to use the second moment, right. So, let us say let me uh, talk about this problem once again. Here h is a fixed graph, not only it is a fixed graph, it is a balanced graph. What do we mean by balanced graph? Uh, the, the we are interested in the number of edges divided by the number of vertices, this is epsilon. So, if for every subgraph of h also we have number of edges divided by number of vertices is less than equal to uh, the that of epsilon of original h. That means, that edge concentration, edge density will be always smaller or equal uh, for each subgraph compared to the original graph. It is not that uh, somehow the total big graph is sparse while there are some induced subgraph of it which is dense that that situation will not arise. So, for every subgraph we will have its edge density less than equal to the edge density of the original one. This is what a uh, balanced graph is and uh, as we had seen in the last class this balanced graph model will capture many interesting uh, graphs for instance cycle, uh, path, trees and uh, complete graphs all these things are balanced graph. Therefore, we already show showed how our theorem about this property, the threshold function for this property immediately implies for cycles, trees and complete graphs etcetera. So, it is a very useful theorem we will to prove it general theorem because we interesting special cases immediately comes out right. So, now let us uh, try to prove this thing right. Um, so, this is what we want to prove the threshold function is always n to the power minus k by l k being the number of vertices, l being the number of edges, k by l that is a 1 by epsilon, right. So, uh, this is what we want to show if h is a balanced graph with k vertices and l greater than or equal to 1 edges, right. So, to show this thing let us uh, as we mentioned let us consider this random variable which uh, denote x of g denotes which denotes the number of subgraphs of g isomorphic to h. Uh, now, uh, the uh, for n element of n, uh, let us define this class of graphs H. Uh, so, uh, that let us let it denote the set of all graphs isomorphic to H whose vertices lie in 0, 1 to n minus 1. See, look 0, 1 to n minus 1 is the set of vertices on which we are considering the random graph g n p model that uh, uh, the n vertices are fixed there right. So, that n vertices 0 1 to n minus 1. So, now the h uh, they can be any graph which is isomorphic to h and with vertex set in from this collection right. So, uh, since h has only k vertices any k subset of this thing can be its vertex set and uh, it should. Uh, be isomorphic to h. So, all such graphs the collection of all such graphs uh, is denoted by h the cap cal h. And uh, now see given h dash element of h we write. So, we have a notation here h dash is a subset of g to denote that h dash itself is a subgraph of g. Not that it is isomorphic copy is there it is the for instance if you if for instance this number the vertices are numbered say 10, 20, 30, 40 like that. Uh, till 10 times k right k time k times 10. So, then um, uh, so if you look at the corresponding vertices same vertices uh, vertex number 10 from this 1 to 0 to 1 to n 20 0 to 1 to n like that. And if you if you see the correct graph h itself there then we will say the, the, the we will say that uh, that particular graph is a subset of this that is where it is not just that uh, we have this graph and some isomorphic copy of it is there. The number of isomorphic copies of h on a fixed k set is at most k factor because all possible permutations of that that is the maximum we can get. So, now the cardinality of h will be definitely n choose k because you can select uh, n choose k into k factorial because you can select each uh, k, uh, k sets of vertices from n set in n choose k ways and in that k set we can have at most k factorial uh, copies uh, isomorphic copies of h not more than that. 
So, less than equal to n raise to k. This is n factorial n into n minus 1 with k terms divided by k factorial that k factorial is cancelled and each of this term is replaced by n. So, n less than equal to n to the power k. Uh, uh, now, the uh, given p equal to p of n. So, we can for instance you. So, I hope uh, you understand what n choose k into k factorial when I say n choose k into k factorial this is n into n minus 1 into n minus k plus 1 divided by k factorial into k factorial this is definitely less than equal to uh, n into this is this can be replaced by another n into n into so n so that is n raised to k right. Uh, so, that is why we substituted uh, here with uh, n raised to k. So, it is the cardinality of h is at most n raised to k. Now, given p equal to p of n, p equal to p of n, let uh, gamma equal to p by t. So, we say this is the, where t is the threshold, where what was the threshold value? The t, t essentially is equal to n raised to minus k by l that we have to remem remember, k by l, uh, this is the threshold. So, p of n is some probability function. So, this, this is what? we denote by gamma of n right gamma right now uh, so we know that t equal to yeah n raised to minus k by n right now let us look what is the probability of uh, for a certain h dash in h to be uh, in g probability of h dash subset of g because h dash has l edges in it. So, the probability definitely will be p to the power l right because each edge has to appear and that happens with probability p they are all independent therefore, you can multiply it out p to the power l hmm, is the probability. Now, what will be the expectation of x then? So, for each uh, graph in this uh, set h uh, you have probability p raised to l you sum it up. So, cardinality of h into p l what is that is less than equal to n to the power k because h this capital H is uh, n to the power k and uh, at most n to the power k. So, we can substitute uh, by n to the power k and p to the power l uh, can be because p p power l see remember here we have defined gamma is equal to p t. So, uh, p by t. So, p equal to gamma t. So, gamma into n to the power uh, gamma into n to the power uh, k by l right. So, then now uh, uh, we can substitute that gamma into n to the power minus k by l whole power l. So, then because that is l and now we will cancel this l n to the power minus k and n to the power k will get cancelled and we have gamma gamma to the power l left. And since we know that gamma tends to 0 as n tends to 0. So, gamma to the power l also tends to 0 that is all. <coughs> so, l is this fixed value that number of edges in h. So, gamma to the power also will tend to 0. When, uh, when p of n is such that p of n by t of n tends to 0 as n tends to infinity that is gamma of n tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. And for such p of n definitely uh, this expectation will tend to 0 as n tends to infinity. If it tends to 0, what does it mean? So, for a large enough n, uh, expectation will be less than 1. So, uh, which means that x has to be equal to 0, right? And uh, the probability will be definitely less than or equal to that expectation by 1. Probability of x greater than or equal to 1 will be by Markov inequality. So, this uh, since the expectation tends to 0, that probability also will tend to 0. This is what we are using is the Markov inequality here. This is the easier part. The, the we Now, we will look at the more difficult part namely to show that uh, uh, if gamma tends to gamma of n tends to infinity and uh, uh, then when uh, the gamma p of n by t of n is such that it as n tends to infinity this also tends to infinity. Then uh, then uh, our 
um, probability that x greater than equal to 1 will also tend to 1 or in other words probability that x equal to 0 will uh, tend to uh, 0 right the other way. That means with high probability we will have a copy of uh, h in the graph this is what we need to prove. So, to prove this we had uh, seen uh, in the last class that uh, a tool can be used uh, a lemma can be used from a Roche many. So, what uh, the lemma told is if mu greater than 0 that means if the expectation is greater than 0 which is always so for our case because all the values are 0 then only mu will be 0 because our values x takes values 0, 1, 2, 3 onwards. So, uh, if all the values are not 0, all out graphs does not have 0 value then of case the mu will be greater than 0 and for enlarge uh, see if this variance divided by mu square sigma square by mu square tends to 0 as n tends to infinity then chi of g will be greater than 0, then chi of g will be greater than 0. Uh, this is what uh, it it tells right sorry not chi of g. So, the x of g will be greater than 0 the x being our variable. So, so the uh, how how with high probability x, x. so uh, that probability that x greater than 0 will tend to uh, 0. So, the, the proof we had seen because whenever uh, x equal to 0 uh, when you consider this other random variable x by mu x minus mu it will be equal to mu. So, if you uh, this is you can say that this probability x equal to 0 probability will be less than equal to probability that x minus mu greater than equal to 0 and then we can use the Chebyshev inequality uh, by this is less than equal to sigma square by uh, mu square and if this tends to 0 definitely this probability has to tend to 0 that means this probability has to be 0 which means that uh, the probability that this happens that uh, uh, x greater than 0 happens tends to uh, 1 right this is uh, this is the idea we are using. So, now now that we, we have this lemma we just have to show that the sigma square by mu square tends to 0 as n tends to uh, 0 so, sorry n tends to infinity n tends to infinity. So, this is wrong. So, but we know that as n tends to infinity our gamma tends to uh, infinity. So, therefore, as gamma tends to infinity the sigma square by mu square has to tends to 0 that is all we have to show. Now, to show this to do we just have to do calculation for this thing it is not very difficult just that the calculations are a little little more involved than usual. So, we need this particular observation. So, this is this will help. So, what is the uh, suppose you consider these two numbers n choose k and n to the power k. Uh, how, definitely we know that n to the power k will be bigger, but how bigger will it depend on how bigger the factor uh, n raised to k by n, n choose k or n choose k by n raised to k will it depend on n. So, it is this says that uh, it, uh, it will not depend on n because uh, this is what because is, we can express that this is uh, only a function of uh, uh, k. So, therefore, n to the power k will be uh, greater than n choose k by only a function of k. It will not be too much more than uh, n, n, n choose k. So, therefore, uh, so n's contribution will not be there in that that is what this says. The proof is very easy you consider this n choose k by n by k. So, this n choose k is 1 by k factor n into n into n minus 1 into n minus k. So, n uh, below we have n to the power k we can distribute 1 and 1 and for each of these things. So, this will be 1 by k factorial into n minus k with the last term is the smallest here we can replace with the smallest term. So, this is raised to k because there, there are k times and now uh, so this can be written as 1 by k factor into 1 minus k minus 1 by n and then because we can we are ready to take a lower bound we can replace n by k here because it, we are only making it uh, this, this what we are subtracting is becoming a little bigger. So, the overall quantity will become uh, uh, become uh, smaller only. So, therefore, see what we have shown now is um, n choose k by n raise to k 
can be lower bound by a function of k alone. So, n choose k will not be much more than n by k uh, sorry n raised to k will not be much more than uh, n by k. So, it will be more than n choose k uh, sorry n choose k by a only by a factor of sorry only by a factor of uh, f of k so where f is a function of k that is what we tell. So, this will be required later. Now, to prove uh, that uh, uh, the, the what we want that when the threshold uh, the probability p of n is above the threshold that p of n by t of n that is gamma of n tends to infinity our probability that x greater than uh, 0 tends to 1. Uh, we need what we need to show is sigma square by mu square will tend to 0 uh, that means uh, what is sigma square? Uh, sigma square is essentially if you remember the sigma square is essentially the expectation of x minus mu whole square right. So, this is what expectation of x square uh, minus 2 mu x plus mu square right because of the linearity of expectation this becomes expectation of x square minus 2 mu is constant and the expectation of x is another mu. So, we get uh, 2 mu square plus mu square expectation of a constant is again constant. So, this will become expectation of x square minus mu square right this is what I can. Now, if you want if you are interested in sigma square by mu square we will divide by mu square here. So, uh, this is what uh, we are getting here. So, this is we have to show that this tends to 0. So, expectation of x square by mu square minus 1 is what we have. So, now uh, we just have to calculate what is this expectation of x square that is the only uh, interesting parameter now right. So, now how will you calculate it? So, first of all we have to understand what is this expectation of x square what is expectation of x square. To understand what is expectation of x square See remember that x was uh, in the last class we show that x can be represented as the sum of several indicator random variables uh, namely. So, you can write it as sigma h for h element of this set right because you know for every h in h we can we can decide whether that h belongs to g or not if it belongs to g this random variable will be 1 otherwise it will be 0. If you sum over all such uh, x h s we will get this uh, sum sum of copies of h in g right. So, now uh, if you want to uh, find the if you want to find uh, x square what will happen if we will be summing up see this there is an h element of h here x h into another h right h element of h here x h. So, so, that means every possible h from this and every possible h from this. So, that will that will be like h comma we can let us say h dash and h double dash right this pair belongs to this h square we can say any so two one h dash from h and another h double dash from this they can be even equal. So, we are just uh, uh, the pro because this ex the the uh, essentially when will this be one because some cases that that will be zero so there are various possibilities x h dash can be one see there are this this many possibilities here x h dash can be one x h double dash uh, can be zero this is one possibility x h dash can be one h double dash can be 1 and uh, x h uh, dash can be 0 and x h double dash also can be 0 or x h dash can be 1, 0 and x h double dash can be 1. So, in all these cases the product will becomes uh, 0. So, if only this case is interesting for us when you sum up these things right. And when will this happen? Both h dash should be present and h double dash should be present. That means h dash uh, union h double dash should be a subset of g. Uh, this probability is what we are interested in because this probability will give the um, 
expectation of that right so then because when you when we are interested in the expectation of x expectation will be for each value what is the probability the probability that uh, because one uh, either 0 or 1 right this indicator and variables are so therefore we will uh, we can put probability of h dash union h double dash uh, is a subset of g right this is what uh, will come so then let us uh, go back here so th that is what we have written here expectation of x square is essentially uh, over all pairs uh, h dash and h double dash from h square um, we have to sum up the probability that h dash union h double dash is a subset of g. Now, uh, what is this probability? Definitely because uh, if they were disjoint there are L plus L 2 L edges will be there, but then there are there are some common edges here. So, we have to minus of that right p to the power 2 L minus h dash intersection h double dash the common edges this is this is the common edges. Uh, so, it, it should be clear enough because we are just looking at how many edges are there in this h dash union h double dash that is exactly this 2 L minus number of edges in the intersection of number of edges common to h dash and h double dash. Now, we know we have to get a value for this thing some we want to put an upper bound for this thing and that is easy because h dash intersection h, h double dash is definitely a subgraph of h. Uh, so, that is its edge density is definitely less than that of h that means less than equal to that of h that means epsilon is uh, at most L by k because L by k is the edge density right. Now, we can uh, if we assume that h dash intersection h dash that has i vertices in it in the intersection then uh, the number of edges is less than equal to i L by k i L by k. So, uh, this is a subset of g is less than equal to p to the power 2 l minus i l by k that is what we will we will get right. So, just that we estimated it we got an upper bound for this thing uh, and substituted that is i l by k here not l by k is essentially the parameters of h l being the number of edges k being the say, edge density here the edge density of this thing will be at most that and i we are assuming uh, the number of vertices in this intersection is i right. So, it can be 0 to k it can be full it can be none right no vertices or it is the same same thing same set of vertices. So, both are possible. So, 0 to k is the uh, uh, possible values of i. Now, uh, we should understand that depending on the pair we select h dash and h double dash this intersection uh, the cardinality of the number of vertices in the intersection will be different. So, let us categorize them according to that. So, for i 0 less than equal to i less than equal to k let h i square we are putting a subset of h i h. So, h dash comma h double dash element of h square such that their intersection is equal to i and uh, the corresponding sum of these probabilities that means this I am writing a i for the sum. Uh, such that h dash union h double dash subset of g the probability of that for such pairs where h dash and h double dash intersection is equal to i such pairs uh, uh, we are finding the sum ok. Now, for i equal to now how do we find it out this sum, we are interested in this sum because if I sum a 0 plus a 1 plus a 2 plus up to a k we are done we got what we are looking for we, we got uh, the uh, expectation right this this sum because this is what we want to find out In, instead of uh, directly summing this we are summing uh, uh, different uh, subs, uh, subs sub sums here. In fact, instead of summing over all the pairs directly we will we put the pairs in several groups depending on their value of their intersection and then we are summing over all such sets right and uh, this is what we want to do now. Uh, which is balanced. So, now how do we do? So, uh, so now we want to we want to find the sum first we start with i equal to 0 that means a 0. A 0 is particularly easy because uh, in this case h dash and h double dash does not have even one vertex in the intersection which means that they are independent right they are independent. So, the if they are independent then there is nothing much to worry uh, the probability of this h dash union h double dash is g is essentially the probability that h dash is there in g and h dash 
double dash uh, is there in G and they are independent we can multiply the probabilities together. So, and then overall H dash, H dash, H double dash uh, pairs such that their intersection is 0 we have to do the summation, but then we can do a little more than that. We sum it over all H dash H double dash pair. It will only increase it a little bit, but it is an only an it is an upper bound. So, we, we take all pairs H dash and H double dash from H square and then this just sum this thing. This can be a little more than what we are looking for, but it is not a problem because uh, see for instance then this will what will happen? This will uh, turn out to be uh, the probability that H dash element of H uh, the, the, the probability that H dash subset of G and so into H double dash subset of H probability that H double dash subset of G. So, this is uh, of case Mm, yeah, th what will you get? This is mu and this is also mu right because this is essentially the definition of mu because for each h we are uh, this will give probability into 1 here and 0 into the corresponding probability would give you the expectation right. This is uh, when you sum over all h's this will give you mu this will give you give you mu. So, therefore, what we get now is uh, that this is less than equal to mu square right what a 0 is less than equal to mu square. If a 0 is less than equal to mu square the good thing is uh, when we when we want finally, the expectation of x square we know that this is a 0 plus a 1 plus up to a k and we have already told this is less than equal to mu square that means, is we can supply uh, replace it by mu square. So, then this will be an upper bound here then finally, we want to find uh, sigma square by mu square which is essentially expectation of x square minus mu square by sigma square sorry by mu square right. Here what will happen? So, here this mu square will go away. So, this mu square and this mu square will go away. So, we will be left with this thing divided mu, squ uh, mu square that is a 1 plus a 2 plus up to a k divided by mu square will be what we will what we look. So, if you want to show that this tends to 0, we just have to show that this tends to 0. How will you show that? So, that both of them tends to 0. Um, so, the so let us take uh, some a i uh, for uh, some i greater than equal to 1. So, this is what we want to say so, h dash union h double dash subset of equal to g uh, we have to sum over all. So, you know first uh, let us take one parameter out that is over all h. So, we, what will we say we, we, we will fix one h dash and then we will sum over all such h dash right by fixing fixing one h. Now, uh, then once you fix it because it is a k vertex uh, there are k vertices in it. Uh, so, what we can do is uh, once you fix k vertices this is k vertices we can take because intersection is i we can take any i set. So, there are k choose i ways of selecting uh, i this is h dash ok. From h dash we can select a collection of i vertices k choose in k choose i ways and now uh, there are n minus k vertices outside is not it n minus k vertices outside. Uh, from n minus k vertices we have to select the remaining n minus y the n minus k choose n minus i vertices. So, along with this and uh, this if we put this then we will get uh, a subset uh, we can say that uh, that is h dash suppose if I if I collect it here h dash this and this together will make your h dash and such that and also the intersection will be um, will be uh, indeed uh, i right. And also of case that once you select this subset we can get h on it in different ways uh, say let us say in h ways right. So, the total can be taken as k choose i into n minus k choose k minus i h and this probability as we know p raised to 2 l minus i l by k right because there are 
uh, that we had already estimated that this is the probability. But we have to sum over all these uh, collections first. This sum correspond to fixing of n h and this should sum should run through all possible h dash in h and then once you fix that this is the number of ways this three terms a k choose i into n minus k choose k minus i into h is the number of ways in which we can select h double dash such that there is an intersection uh, of i vertices with the fixed h h dash because uh, first uh, we can select the i vertices from k then the remaining k minus i can be selected from the outside n minus k vertices and this h is the number of ways in which you can uh, get isomorphic copy of h in that vertices that can we know that that is at most k factorial this h right p to the power 2 uh, 2l minus i i just split it and wrote here the 2l minus i l by k right this is uh, the probability of this because there are so many edges in it as we have already seen now because this uh, the summing uh, can be just replaced for every h uh, so therefore there are so many h's so we cardinality of h will be surprised replaced then here this is k choose i and uh, n minus k choose k, n k minus i into h into p to the power 2l into gamma so here p can be again replaced by gamma into n raised to minus k by l into minus uh, i l by k right so uh, here as usual you can uh, see that the when we cancel this here this k will go and then we have l also will go away and we will just have a plus i here n raised to i will come from here gamma raised to minus i l by k will come from here and, he, and now from this side if you look h into 1 out of this p raised to 2 l we can give 1 p raised to l to this h into p raised to l will al already become a mu that is a expected value because p raised to l is the probability for a particular h to occur. So, therefore, h into p l is a mu is 1 mu and then why did I put c 1 here c 1 was because k choose i is a, only a function of k at most we can say k to the power k or something. So, it would not depend on n therefore, we are just replacing it by a constant and here we are just substituting by an upper bound here n raised to k minus i will be an upper bound and when I combine n power n minus k n raised to k minus i and uh, n raised to i we will get n power k here. So, uh, here we have uh, h into p to the power l into gamma raised to minus i l by k here. Now, you see uh, the, but then we know we can you know n raised to k is not much more than n choose k as, as we it is only a function of k more. So, we can take that function out here and join with c 1 and make this constant c 2 c 1 is replaced by a constant c 2 now contains a k of k it is a it is a function of k when I say constant it does not it uh, we only mean that it does not depend on n mu into c 2 uh, and n choose k into h into uh, p raised to l into gamma raised to minus and this n choose k into h is already the cardinality of h once again and p raised to l multiplied we will get these three terms together we will get uh, uh, mu once again. So, that becomes mu square into c 2 into gamma raised i l by k and here gamma uh, this is minus i l by k gamma being greater than 1 now because gamma is tending to infinity. So, we can discard that i we can just write minus i uh, minus l by k right because so it is only making it a little bigger. So, but then gamma tends to infinity. So, this gamma raised to minus l by k will tend to 0 then right this entire thing will tend to 0 as we see. So, this is the uh, reason why our sigma square by mu square uh, tends to uh, 0 sigma square by mu square tends to 0 and sigma square by mu square tends to 0 as uh, would imply as we have seen that the probability that x greater than uh, 0 tends to 1 and therefore, we will have with the uh, uh, probability tending to 1 uh, the copy of h in g this is what it says. So, this is uh, a application how we apply the second moment method. So, uh, with this thing we will 
uh, close the second movement method idea. We will before uh, winding up the probabilistic method and the random graphs, we will uh, consider one more interesting tool from this uh, from this um, topic. So, namely the Lovash local lemma. So, I will just very quickly go through this because it is a very useful tool the interested student. So, though I may not be able to make it very clear here the interested student is uh, um, advised to read up this material because this is a very powerful and useful tool. So, now see how do we uh, understand this thing. So, <coughs> so here uh, let us uh, look at the situation. So, usually uh, as we had seen in earlier what we want is uh, to avoid to say that the certain uh, structures occur. So, that means certain events occur uh, that means these events uh, occur and then we this events can be interpreted as uh, the complement of several bad events that means the, in the intersection of the complement of several bad events. For instance, in our first example of the Ramsey problem we wanted a graph uh, without uh, a kk having a kk was a bad event here and without a sk independent set on k that means the bad event one bad event we wanted to avoid was having a kk as a subgraph and another bad event was uh, having uh, sk as a subgraph sk as a subgraph right and uh, what we did there was estimated the probability of having uh, this bad event and we estimated the probability of this bad event and summed up and sh showed that when uh, the number of uh, vertices is uh, so certain below certain function of k then we still have after summing up we still have uh, this probabilities together will be less than 1. Therefore, there is a probability that neither this bad event nor this bad event occurred. So, there is a probability that uh, we will have a good event I mean good event means uh, not bad in either way right. So, the, com in the good event will be the intersection of the complement of this and this intersection of the complement of these two bad events right that is what we did. Uh, then the problem there was that our tool was very very weak because we found the probability of this this bad event we have found the probability of this bad event and summed up and uh, uh, we had to show that that sum is less than 1. So, but what if this because there are just 2 events we may see that what is the problem, but the, the suppose there are several bad events say E 1, E 2, E 3 and so there are n bad events right. Now, suppose the probability of this thing is p p 1 the probability of this thing is p 2 and the probability of this thing is p 3 and so on this is. So, we will have to sum up these p i's and show that this is still less than 1 for the good event to happen. Good event being good event is defined to be something in the intersection or the complement of all these e i's bad means. So, it should not be uh, bad in the E 1 way, it should not be bad in the E 2 way, it should not be bad in the E 3 way and it should not be bad in the E n way right. The, the good means in the co in the intersection of the complements of all these things right. So, that is what we want. So, this uh, may not be so easy because we have to multiply for instance if, if these all these things are upper bounded by certain p and then uh, this will be p n right at most p n. So, if n is big it may so happen that uh, p n is already uh, too large. So, when there are several events to handle, so this may not be very feasible this approach. So, but still in many situations the number of events may be large, but it may look like this event and this event are many of these events are mutually independent, independent of each other that means they would not influence each other. If suppose they were all mutually independent the problem would be very easy mutually when I say mutually independent uh, what do I mean by saying when I say E 1, E 2, E n are mutually independent events uh, which means 
that uh, the pro for any subset, so you take any uh, subset i of n, right? Then uh, if I find the probability of the intersection of all these events, right? That will be the product of the corresponding probabilities. That is what we mean, right? For any subsets, not just for the entire thing, for any subset. So i element of i, right? So now, so uh, and if this happens, it's easy to show that the complements also will be mutually in independent. That means if you are interested in this event, right? For any subset of i, that will be again the product of uh, the corresponding uh, probabilities, right? I element of i, right? For the, this is the probability of the complement event. And uh, you see, if each of these bad events had a probability strictly less than one, that has to be for expecting that uh, a good event, an event will be there which is not bad in that way. So, the probability of each of these events has to be less than 1, then each of these probabilities is greater than 0, when you take the product that will still be greater than 0. So, therefore, if they are mutually independent, then definitely we have a choice. So, the problem is when they are not mutually independent and if they have too much dependence, we cannot do much because we will have to sum them up. But uh, then there is this intermediate situation where uh, it is uh, not mutually independent, but still the dependency among these events is quite low. So, how do we capture this concept? To capture this concept, we introduce a uh, concept called uh, dependency graph. So, when to define this dependency graph, we want to define something called uh, uh, mutually, when is an event E is mutually independent of a set of events E1, E2, En. So, we say that an event E is mutually independent of the events E1, E2, En. If for any subset i subset of 1 to n or n, so the uh, uh, probability that E occurs conditioned on that all these events in i occurred right together occurred simultaneously occurred is again it is not it is not the probability value is not changed this conditional probability same as p of e. In that case we will say that uh, the they are e is mutually independent of the events e 1 e 2 e n. Now, what is the dependency graph? We will draw a graph uh, such that each uh, of these events E1, E2, En will become the vertex set. So, we will say vertex set is 1 to n. Essentially, E1 will be the one of the vertices, E2 will be another vertex, E3 will be another vertex and En will be another like that, n vertex graph. To the vertices capture the bad events and uh, uh, we will have to make, for each vertex we will have to make uh, all those vertices neighbors in such a way that the neighbors should be defined in such a way that the non neighbors so, from starting looking from a certain event E i, its non neighbors uh, with respect to its non neighbors, it should be mutually independent. So, that means uh, for i equal to 1 to n, the event E i is mutually independent of the events E j such that i j is not an edge, e j, uh, the mutually independent of the non neighbors of it. I E i uh, is mutually independent of the events corresponding to the non neighbors of i. So, slightly uh, because rather than saying that uh, I look at two vertices, two vertices i and j and then if e i j and e, e i and e j are uh, mutually independent, uh, sorry independent, uh, then uh, I, I do not put an edge between them or if e i and e j are dependent, then I put an edge, that is not the way it is defined. It is defined that after constructing the graph, uh, if you look at the non neighbors for a particular E i, particular vertex i, the events corresponding to the non neighbors, let it be certain collection. So, our E i should be mutually independent of that, right. So, uh, so from problems it will be very clear how it happens. So, not that we have we keep, we have to keep constructing it in such a way that it happens, but uh, it will be automatic in many questions. So, if this happens, then uh, what are we saying? Then we say that we, we have this tool which is called Lavash local lemma. This is called the symmetric version of the Lavash local lemma or the simple version. 
there is a more complicated or general version a symmetric version we won't look at it because um, we just want to mention this uh, tool so that the students can look up that later so even e2 en be the set of events the so called bad events and assume that the following holds for each uh, event the probability of this the corresponding bad event ei is at most p the degree of the dependency graph after we construct the dependency graph as we described earlier uh, e1 e2 en uh, the dependency graph on this events is bounded by d so there is a bound on the degree of each one that means uh, look at ei there are at least n minus 1 minus d uh, events such that this ei is mutually independent of uh, and then 4 d into p d being the degree of the dependency graph p being the upper bound for the probability of ei uh, that should be total will be less than or equal to 1 then the probability that i equal to 1 to n ei bar uh, will be greater than then uh, that means we have a non zero probability for the good event to happen good event means it is uh, in the complement of the intersection of all the bad events that means it is not bad in any of the uh, uh, these ways e1 way or e2 way or en way it is not bad right so the pro there will be a probability therefore there should be some uh, point in the sample space which will satisfy our property so if you are looking for a property of that type right this is what it says so now quickly to illustrate the point uh, we will we will take up a small question here uh, the question is this so now we have so this I, I hope this simple example will illustrate this point um, so suppose we have this in a graph in a network we have several source destination pairs s1 t1 so s2 t2 s3 t3 and we have s n t n so many source destination pairs and the our intention is to give a communicating path for them that means there should be a path from s1 to t1 and the only thing is we have a constraint due to some practical reasons that uh, they should pick up their paths from a set of given paths which is called a f1 f1 right similarly this should pick up their given path from a set of given paths from f2 and here from f3 and this from fn so each of this will contain several paths they can pick one from so they had they don't have more choices any any one from this they can pick but the problem is if you if suppose this is a path here another path here may intersect on some edges of this thing but there can be some edge uh, intersection that is not allowed because we are not supposed to you take if i take a path here for s1 t1 then i should not path take a path s2 t2 such that it goes and touches this thing so we want to take disjoint paths for each of them but it the the way f1 f2 f3 are given they have this kind of intersection so the question is is it possible to find uh, is it possible to find the paths <coughs> in such a way that they are all disjoint so what we are going to do here is uh, that uh, suppose we have a condition that any path in fi if you take a path from fi some path uh, p from fi then we are guaranteed that p will not intersect p will not intersect with more than k paths in another set say f j right i not equal to j here right in this case uh, we can <coughs> uh, pick up the pick up uh, paths individual uh, paths for si ti such that they are disjoint for, for, for each si ti we get a disjoint path the non intersecting paths non touching paths so we need a condition so definitely we can see that the question will be to estimate 
how big should be f i for each f i right because if each f i's are very small then it may not be possible because if there is one path to select in each f i then we will not have to select that only and there is no guarantee that they are not touching each other right. So, we should have some choice there should be certain number of paths in f i then only we will be able to do that how big it should be. So, the idea is to select let us say we will we'll fix it in the end we will give equal probability for each path in f i for when I want to say tell select a path for s i t i we will we will not give any preference to any path in it so each of them will be given equal probability and randomly we will select one. So, that means each path will get a probability of 1 by uh, cardinality of f i right. So, you know that that will be the probability with which we will select it right 1 by cardinality of f i will be the probability with which we select uh, <coughs> the the path. So, now the uh, the question is uh, this event bad event is what we will define a bad event E i j uh, where uh, E i j means the path selected for the ith uh, pair S i t i intersect with the path selected for the jth pair S j t j. What is the probability the probability of uh, E i j then definitely that is less than equal to because one path is selected for j and this path will intersect with at most k paths in j therefore, that is k by uh, e m if you say m is the at least m paths are there in this right if this is. So, let us say right k by m. Now, we know what we need is 4 p times d should be less than uh, 1 that is what we want right. So, 4 p d should be less than equal to 1. So, that is for the Lavash lemma less than equal to 1. If this happens where d is, d is the degree of the dependency graph p is this con this number that is 4 into k by m uh, into d is less than equal to 1 then we know that we we can get the required property that means none of the c i j s happen that means none of the paths for none of the pairs i j the path selected for i will intersect with the path selected for j. So, now what should be the degree of the dependency graph it is so you know the dependency graph because one event uh, the degree will be definitely uh, only uh, 2n right because you know when when will the dependencies come um, for this i and j either i or j should be in that right. So, we can substitute by 2n here. So, I, I if you are not following because we do not have time. So, the students can uh, think about it and find out that it is 2n. So, we get uh, um, if 8 k n by m is less than equal to 1 this will happen that means if m is greater than at least 8 k n this can happen. So, uh, so we, we will start with another topic in the next class if this is not clear the student can think about it. Thank you.